I'd like to welcome you to a very exciting class. Uh, the subject is exciting, the material is exciting, and you're exciting. So it's, it's wonderful to see you. We thank you for taking of your very valuable time to sit in a unique class and, and study our universe that we live in. Uh, <clears throat> there, there is darkness over a good part of our universe, and we need to understand it. We need to understand how to deal with it, and we need to know that we're the conquerors. Not one place in the entire Bible are you told to fear evil, <laughs> to run away from the devil. We're not runaways. We're not cowards. We're fighters, and we are winners. We are studying uh, in this class uh, demons and deliverance, principalities and powers from a, a, a teaching syllabus from our World Harvest School of Continuous Learning uh, that is here in the city of, of South Bend, Indiana, our regular Bible college work. And uh, we are delighted to share uh, this not only with our class, uh, but with you. You can, you can secure this syllabus by ordering it. And uh, also, uh, you can secure uh, from us uh, this, this beautiful uh, grouping of, of uh, tapes, uh, audio tapes, uh, for this whole series. Uh, you can get the entire series together. And what a volume, what a volume you'd have in your own, in your own home. And you that have gotten into the, and, and to the visual and the video, uh, we have it uh, uh, right here in video for you, so where uh, you can play it on your own TV set. And possibly that is the best way, possibly that is the best way uh, for you to, uh, to have it uh, there in your home. All three ways are great. Be sure and, and, and receive it. In our former lesson in, in this series, uh, we <clears throat> introduced to you the, 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 the world that we're in today and the spiritual needs in this world and in which we in which we live now uh, we we have a, 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 a lesson here that's called a preparation uh, for action we thought it was very necessary uh, to prepare our hearts uh, for this type of things uh, in, in the New Testament we find <clears throat> uh, some uh, some brothers that went to exercise uh, a spirit and they they found when they got there they were overcome by this evil and it tore their clothes off of them and chased them out of the house. You see, they had not prepared themselves for it. We feel that preparation is very necessary. And in the area of uh, casting out of evil spirits, uh, you, number one, must have some knowledge, you know. Uh, God cannot bless ignorance. God is not ignorant. The devil is very often ignorant. And, uh, but, but God is not ignorant. God cannot bless ignorance. And so if you wish for God to bless you, then increase your knowledge. Increase your knowledge. Now, ignorance does not mean that you're stupid. Ignorance only means that you haven't learned yet. And God wants us to know. And it's time today to understand the tremendous truths in, in relationship uh, to demons and devils and uh, the occult and, and spiritism and uh, all kinds of, uh, of, of areas that have to do with the non-Christian area of the supernatural. And so in our universe in which we live today, the first thing I want you to know about it is that our universe is no accident. Our universe did not evolve through some erratic and fortuitous forces uh, coming from some unknown origin. I just can't every day get myself to come down to understand to why a man can put a PhD behind his name and some other letters and, and, and say, well, there is no God. You know, part of you, part of you needs help and it needs sympathy. Just look at the stars and tell me there's no God. You know, how could you say it? Uh, you, you couldn't look at my watch and say there's no watchmaker. No watchmaker. Oh, yeah, there's a watch. There's no watchmaker. Uh, one time it was a little piece of metal and it, and it is screwed around this way and that way and it added a little piece here and there and now I have to 14 billion years. There it is. You know, that, that borders on, 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 on very dense stupidity. Uh, I can't see, uh, when a man looks at a cow and says, there's a beautiful cow, she, she eats the green grass, and when she's milked, uh, she's got the white milk, and, and when you take the milk and churn it, you've got the, the, the yellow butter. That's a phenomena. That is a phenomena. To look at a chicken, eat worms, eat worms. <laughs> A black hen eats red worms and lays white eggs, and they're so good. And, and then God protects them by putting a shell around it, you see. 
You don't understand that. Well, nobody's ever understood it. They never will understand it. And yet we all love eggs. We've got to know that there are things in this world that we need some learning about. And one of them is the negative world that's beyond us. There are people being hurt today by negative forces, and they don't know why they are being hurt. And those people need to learn something. So, preparation for action. If the church is going to deal with the problem of demons in the world that we're in today, that church needs to learn something. And you begin by saying the universe that we live in didn't get here by accident. It, it, it just did not. It did not evolve. No fortuitous force with unknown origins had any re relationship to bringing about the sun, the moon, the stars, the flowers, the seas, the mountains. All globular and, and stellar information whether it be of speed, of sound, of light, of color, of weight, it is intelligent. It does not, it does not, it does not work fortuitously. It doesn't work one way today. Light does not travel at one speed today and another speed tomorrow. It does, it simply does not. And, and so uh, our, our information of the whole, not on this globe, but the whole universe, uh, has an intelligent operation and function, and you know it, and everybody else knows it. We just don't want to give God the glory for it. That, that's the amazing thing. The unlimited and immeasurable galaxies. Every time you, you, you hear from the astronomers, they found another million stars up there. They looked into what seemed to be empty space, and they got a, a better telescope, and here they found whole new constellations up there and dimensions. Uh, with un in innumerable uh, uh, bodies of uh, of, uh, of stars and and and, and all kinds of uh, of uh, heavenly formations and <laughs> and what looks like a little spot, they can enlarge their telescope and it becomes worlds and worlds and worlds. It should be very easy for those people to say, "Our Father, which art in heaven." <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. Hey, yeah, yeah. Now, that can't exist by fortuitous forces that don't know what they're doing, that have no understanding of what they're doing, and they're not intelligent. So the unlimited, and it is unlimited, and the immeasurable, and they are immeasurable. The galaxies of the heavens, of the heavenly bodies in the outer space, they are vast. They're beyond any common, any human comprehension. They found the dark holes in space that hold suns and moons and stars are sucked into them, and they don't even know where they go. Well, they'll find out one day. Uh, if not in this life, in the world to come, Jesus will take you over and show it to you. Uh, but it's beyond man. It's beyond man. The functions and the movements of the cosmic dimensions, they're intricate. And so we have here that they are known in their origin. They are intelligent. They are uh, vast. Uh, they are intricate, and they are, you can set your clock by them. Um, all the time on this, on this planet Earth is regulated by that North Star and its relationship to the Earth on which we are here. Our time elements are, 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 are cast, and really, they're, they're time minutes. They're, everything is related to, 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 to time. All your segments of, a, of, a, of 3 o'clock in one place, 4 o'clock in another is, is, a, is a movement element. Uh, between the two. And, and when we understand these functions of these movements of the cosmic dimensions, they are intricate. Our universe in which you and I, and which the planet Earth is a finite part of, uh, we are also a very active part of it. And it's a real place. It is a real place. <laughs> we are not floating in a great, in a, in a great uh, uh, confusion system. It, it's very real where we are. Now, there are three, there are three areas uh, of, of known intelligent uh, sources of power. And, and this whole series of lessons are going to be on power, and especially on, on the power of the devil. Most of his power is assumed power. Uh, you know, when you were a boy, you could have an next-door neighbor that he'd wind up and say, I'm going to suck you, you know, and you, you took that as power. You accepted it as power. But if you sucked him real quick and he ran home to tell his mother, it was an assumed power, you know? It, it wasn't real. It, it was only imaginary. Now, that is the, the same relationship with the devil. He only has power that he steals from you. He stole it from Adam, Adam and Eve in the garden. In, in Genesis chapter 1, 
verses 26 and 27, God says to Adam, I give you dominion. Now, if he had it, the devil did not have it. The devil has no dominion on this earth that belongs to him. Uh, his dominion is the prince and the power of the air uh, up above the earth. It has no dominion on the earth. And any dominion that he has here, it is assumed. And it, it is it's a pretend. He, he, he pretends that he has it. He told Jesus, he says, I'll give you all the nations of the world. <laughs> well, they were already his. Well, what did he mean, give them to him, when they were already his? It was so insignificant, for Jesus didn't even answer him back. He didn't even answer him back. It wasn't even worth a, a return answer for it. There are three known and intelligent sources of power in the realm of our human knowledge. Number one is God's power. Now, now God is the creative and the benevolent force of power of the universe. He is a personality. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro on the earth. He has eyes. It says the finger of God wrote the Ten Commandments. He has fingers. It says that God walks. He has feet. And, and so uh, our God, benevolent, creative, wonderful, beautiful, made the earth in which we live. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Acts 10 and, and 38, the devil came to destroy. Jesus came that he, might, that he might bring life. He is the life. Hebrews 1 and 1. And so we discover that there is God's power. Now that power that is very much in evidence in the cosmic is also evident in many places. It makes the flower to bloom. It makes the grass to grow. Uh, you know, uh, all around us, are, are, are the, the visual and, and non-invisible effects and results of such tremendous power. God is a power source, and see him in that area. And then you won't have to run from evil. You won't have to run from the devil when you see him in his proper relationships uh, with the human person. All right, number two, not only do we have divine power in the universe that we live in, uh, sovereign divine power uh, that, is, uh, that, is, uh, uh, that, that is used through intelligence and through love, you see, uh, God's power. We, we then go to man's power. Uh, man is what we would uh, describe as a neutral power. He is a neutral power. He's not good or bad initially. Uh, is a neutral power. And that he has a potential to become a part of the good power uh, which is God's power, are, are the negative evil power, which is satanic and, and demonic and demonish, you see. The Apostle Paul said uh, to man, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And so here we discover that man uh, is born in a neutral relationship. Uh, God wants him to receive his power. But now the Bible says <laughs> to man, of man, that whoever you serve, uh, he is your master. Now, if a man, if a, if a man or a woman says, I don't want to serve God, he, he only has one other master, and that's the devil. Uh, you say, I'm neutral. Uh, there's no neutrality on the face of this earth. You either belong to God or you don't. And if you don't, then you're under the devil's power. If you belong to God, you're under God's power. There are only three forces and powers known to man. There are no other resources that you can go to and say, well, I have that power. There, there isn't any there. And in man's power uh, that we're discussing here, it can lend itself uh, to, to, to God's power. For example, I could have a little uh, uh, piece of wire here, and this wire uh, would uh, not have nothing in it, you know. It would be what we call neutral power. Well, that's like man. Then I can take this wire and I can hook it up here uh, with some energy coming from the power plant. And then I can hook it up over here to a little piece of machinery and <laughs> put them together and the machinery starts working. And that little neutral thing there is no longer neutral. It has associated itself with a source of energy. It is associated itself with a source of energy. And now that source of energy comes pouring through the neutrality and it makes something happen over here. Now that's man for you. Now man has to decide his source of energy. Now, 
Uh, you, you've already decided it. <laughs> You're on God's side. Uh, you have the positive energy uh, flowing through you. Uh, but there are millions, multiplied millions, that their whole total source of energy is negative. It's anger, it's, it's, it's hate, uh, it's envy, it's, it's strife, it's lust. It is everything except what God is. They have, they have loaned themselves their, their neutrality to a source of energy that is completely destructive. Destructive and evil and bad. And then over here, they're making some things go around. They're going backwards, though. Yeah, homes are being destroyed. Uh, business are being destroyed. Uh, lives are being destroyed uh, for the simple reason that they got their connection with the wrong source of energy. So God is the first and greatest positive a source of energy in the universe. Connect yourself with God, and you got it made. <laughs> you got it made. But then you come to man. Man can do things. You see, uh, with these two hands, I can do things. I can do things because I have strength and I have energy here. But I will have to decide how to use it. I can use it constructively or destructively. I can say to God, uh, may I speak truth for you and change lies? The Lord says, yes. Then I take my energy pouring forth from my lungs and my lips and my throat, and I can pour it out and change lives. Then I have connected myself with a source of benevolent energy, pouring through the neutrality into a great need. And maybe they can only see me. Oh, oh, Sumrall, you are just great. Oh, you are just great. <laughs> and you smile and say, whew, you should have seen me before I got connected with that energy over there. And you see, I wasn't much of anything at all. But when I got connected with this right source of energy, I can pray for you and you're healed and I can bless you and you're changed life and you've become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Not because of the little wire here that's disconnected, the neutrality wire, but because I have, I have deemed it wise to connect myself with a source of energy beyond myself and greater than myself and better than myself. And when I connect it, then it flows through me to another dimension over here. And you can only see the part that's blessing you, which is the human element, which is the neutral element. And, and he has to teach you. Now, listen, this is not really me. This is God over there behind me. I'm just connected. <laughs> and with my connection, I am blessing you with this source of energy. So the, the, the two sources of energy we have spoken of is the, the divine source that comes from God. It's the greatest source on the face of the universe. Then uh, you have man. And, and the Bible specifically says that whoever a man loans himself, lends himself, becomes a part of, that he is a servant of that thing. You become a servant of sin, did you know it? You become a servant of alcohol. You become a servant of dope and drugs, you see? You become a servant of sex. Wherever you ling yourself the wrong way, you become a slave, a slave over there. But when you lend yourself unto God to serve Him, then flowing from that are the fruit of the Spirit, uh, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, the blessings of heaven. Whoo! <laughs> Be sure you've got the right connections, that you're connected with a source of energy that builds up and doesn't knock down. Uh, there are a lot of knockdowners in the world today, but let's go into that. Uh, we have God's source of energy, positive. We've got man's source, source of energy, uh, a neutral, that can be connected either way. And then we have, we have one called the devil or, or, or Satan or Lucifer, whatever. The Bible has several names for him. And this evil one is a malevolent a personality. Uh, his whole energy uh, is directed toward destroying whatever God has done. When, when we get into heaven, we may find that he has destroyed stars, <laughs> constellations. There's no telling what we're going to find out when we get over there uh, that he has done. We know that here on the earth, when we study him, he calls the Tower of Babel to be built. That was man trying to build his way up to heaven without God. Uh, we, we got, he got into Judas. The Bible says that he entered into Judas and, and made Judas. He loved Jesus. Judas did love Jesus. He wouldn't have committed suicide if he hadn't. But the devil got into him and, and caused him to make the wrong decision, to be lustful for money. The, the Bible says the love of money is a root of all evil. That root choked his whole life being 
until he, he wanted 20 pieces of silver, uh, 30 pieces of silver, more than he wanted anything else in the world. Then when he got them, <laughs> like a lot of rich people today, they got it and don't know what to do with it. So he just threw the stuff down on the floor. He didn't want it. He had connected himself with the wrong source of energy. He would connected himself with the devil and, and with Satan. So when a man does that, he is he, connected himself with one who wishes to destroy all the good things God has. God is a builder, and he wants to knock down everything that God has done. God, God built the Garden of Eden. And don't get worried about it. He's going to build another one. And you're going to be there, and I'm going to be there. He calls it the New Jerusalem. And, 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 and the trees that were in the first garden, they're going to be there. The tree of life is going to be there. And the, the tree of knowledge and good and evil will be there. One tree will bear fruit, uh, 12 kinds of fruit, 12 times a year. And just the leaves of the tree will, will be healing for, for nations of people that will be living on planet Earth at that time. And so the end is not yet. In fact, we've just gotten to the in, exciting chapter. <laughs> and that's the reason why we wish to teach you so, so thoroughly, so completely that you will be on God's side so strong that you will set men free. You know, there are people that want to be free, and they cannot be free. They cannot free themselves. They've gotten into the, the, the devil's uh, clutches, and sometimes they got in through ignorance. Somebody helped them into it. Sometimes they got in there through transgression, through sin. Sometimes sometime they get in there through fear, you know. And they get into the devil's clutches, and they need help to get out. They need what you're hearing right now to get out. Someone with a positive faith, with a positive trust in the Word of God, who knows what he's saying, believes what he's saying, has, has, has experienced what he's saying, to come and set them free by God's mighty power. That's our job. How glad we are to be performing the work of God. But we find in John 10 and 10, that this smell of personality, that, that he has come into this world to be a thief, and, and to be a destroyer, and to be a killer. And, and, and that's, that's his... That's his that's his business. Uh, he is an inter-nebular uh, gangster. Uh, he, he has entrance to the throne room of God. He is the prince of the power of the air uh, above us here. He walks throughout the earth, and we're going to study that. Uh, if you don't know much about it, just hang with us here, and, and you, we, we're going to study every, every department of it. You're not going to be left in, a, in, a, in any shadow of ignorance of any kind on the face of this earth. You're going to know the truth, and the truth is going to set you free. I am believing, God, that there will be a million people that will be able to set other people free from the devil's power. They'll understand the power of prayer, the power of faith, the, 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 the power of believing the Bible, you know, and that they will be able to set people free in Jesus' name. And so this internebular gangster must be cast down. He must be defeated. He must be ruined. And Jesus, John 10 and 10 uh, tells us that's what he is, but Jesus said, I've come to give life and to give it more abundantly. The devil has caused the ills or sorrows of mankind from the Garden of Eden to this point in history, further than this point into the Great Tribulation. The works of the devil through his fallen angels uh, uh, and their cosmic forces uh, with their evil designs, and we give you scriptures for that in, this, in the syllabus when you get it. And we have come to know that the Holy Scriptures are the only authoritative source of information about Satan that you're going to ever get. You won't ever get it in any other book, in any other catalog. You're going to have to go to the Bible. The Bible 200 times directly speaks to us of this malevolent personality called the devil over 200 times. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan enters the realm of human activity as an entity different from humanity completely as a fallen angel from heaven. Uh, Job chapter 1 reveals that Satan is an oppressor of good people. He said, let me, let me oppress Job. I want to oppress Job. The oppressor is not God. God is not an oppressor, but the devil is an oppressor. Matthew 4 shows the audacity of this tempter. He even tempted the Lord Jesus Christ, and if he tempted Christ, he's sure God will tempt you. You better believe it. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10, it predicts his final incarceration. We are the victors. We are the winners. Read the last page and find out. And he will be placed into an eternal confinement because of his rebellion against God, his hatred toward God, and his hurting of human persons like yourself. The devil does not want the truth. He doesn't want, he doesn't want even the truth about him to be revealed. He's a hiding creature, hiding behind something all the time. He doesn't want it disclosed as to where he came from and what he's doing today. He hates exposure of himself and his deeds. He is a camouflager. And he camouflages as an angel of light. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, it says that he is as an angel of light, you see, a deceiving people, uh, making people think he's good when he is not good. 
<coughs> there are people they think spiritism is good. They think <coughs> occultism is good. They think the gurus out of India that they are good, you see, when actually they have given themselves over to this negative force and they, 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 they are seeking information uh, from the netherworld and, and from, the, from the underworld of the spirit uh, when they should be seeking the upper world of God uh, for guidance. And they, and, they, and they do not do that. So what we must have is Christian action. We must have that, that neutral person of power to, to receive the upper person of power and come against the lower person of power. The Christian is to take action against the devil, as you will find in Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. Also in Ephesians 4 and 27, the Word of God warns that believers should not, should give no place to the devil, no honor to him, no praise to him, no fear to him. And I want to tell you one thing. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you that in these classes uh, that, that the devil is pleased with it and the devil likes it and that we are honoring the devil. We are destroying him. We are tearing him to pieces. We are exposing him. We are putting him out of locomotion. And that's what we want to do. And that's what we want to do. Disciples must believe. They must accept. They must follow the words of God. And if they don't, then they cannot set humanity free.